I really got to get the volume for the intro music down lower. But this is Jarrell from uh, Hybrid Radio. I am here at Irving Plaza in New York City. And I'm here with uh, Alex, right? Yep. From uh, Suicide Silence. Suicide Silence drummer. Drummer, yes. And he... (laughs) You uh, this tour is you're touring right now with Corn, who are like, basically playing their whole like album all the way through. So, has yep. the tour been a little relentless for you? You seem a little exhausted right now. Um, we had a a long show, uh, a, an off show last night, um, in Pittsburgh. It was a really good show. Um, I just stood out really late. Um, doing yeah, what? Woke anything up, fun? I, huh? Doing anything fun? Staying out late? Just um, yeah, party. I was hanging out with some friends. That's um, nice. it was really good. This, but this core tour has been pretty awesome. I mean. I've been listening to Corden since I was mm-hmm. probably like twelve years old, so it's all coming full circle. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what I wanted to know is that since you're uh, obviously you said you're a big fan of Corn and everything like that, do you have a chance to hang out with them like more on this tour versus when you guys play with them at the uh, Mayhem Fest last Mayhem year? Mayhem Fest, um, yes, definitely. The opportunities have been more um, available. Uh-huh. Uh some of the dudes just kinda like come to our dressing room uh, and said what up. Uh we, we see each other at catering and it's not like it's you know, seventeen bands, it's actually just like us two and then like one other band islander, so this uh-huh. is only day four, so um first show was kinda hectic, second was kinda getting there and slowly and slowly like the bear the uh bearings are getting greased. Uh-huh. So we're slowly, slowly <laughs> like for realizing like you know like oh yeah hey like it's not like kind of awkward and also keeping in mind like there's are there are bands out there that like are pretty um reclusive and you know introverted so i'm we're definitely not that way right right we're definitely social and like to talk and bullshit about anything so uh-huh. but yeah it's been pretty chill okay so I, I actually read online that uh you were supposed to play with parkway drive on their like australian tour yeah and you're doing this tour instead was that like a no-brainer to not do that tour, or was that like definitely a, a no-brainer? Um, w- initially, when we started um, after Mayhem, or not after Mayhem, after our European run, we were um, trying to decide like what because we ha- we're going to write an album actually and um, record it, obviously, with Ross Robinson actually who okay. did, who did Corn Record, but um, yeah, we we decided on that tour because we wanted to go to Southeast Asia and Japan and China mm-hmm. and Australia since it's all in the same cusp. Um, but, you know, this tour came up, and this is, like, more of, like, a bucket list tour, so right, it was definitely right. a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. So was there any, um, it was, was there any issue to not do it? Like, did you have to make some, like, uh, well, like we, depressing calls or anything we, like that? Or Yeah, we pissed yeah. piss a lot of people off, but, I mean, anyone who can see, like, about the band and, like, see what we did instead will obviously understand. In return for it, um, we are going to go back to Japan and play for free. Okay, that's um, cool. Like as far as us, like we're they cover the flights, but we're not gonna ask for a guarantee or anything. We're just gonna just to show them that we are genuinely genuinely sorry for yeah. for canceling and bailing. Like well, I think the promoters already sold tickets for the shows. A lot of people actually, the last show we had in um, Detroit, some guy from Japan came <laughs> out and he's just like, you know, why you know, why you know come to Japan. <laughs> we're like, well, because Corny's like, I know, I know, it's okay. I was about that's to say, they probably understand. And once they he's hear like, that. he's all, he's all. That's why I came. He, yeah, he was supposed to see us there, but he flew over. Wow. And yeah, and then he got to see us in uh, a little slap in the face to Parkway Drive, but you know, maybe. Well, whatever. I mean, we've we've been friends with Parkway, and they understand. Yeah. And at the same time, they they got a band, The Artist Murder, who are our other good friends, and and it, it's almost kind of cool because like they're gonna be touring the states also. Right. So it's, you know, you got like two Australian bands playing in America, mm-hmm. and playing kick ass shows, and that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it's like, like ACDC and Les Silver Chair. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just not as aggressive. So I want to tell you, um, I, the way I got introduced to you guys is when I started this radio station, I have a friend I work with, and I was like, you know, I want to have a metal station as well, and you like metal. So, like, what are some bands that, you know, you could offer me? So he's like, a, he gave me stuff like, a, the despised icon of KCS string and you guys, and I'm thinking I thanked him, but I also want to thank you guys because originally, like that sound before this, your your brutal sound is like or the way you your aggressive playing was to me like noise. But when I when I listened to you guys and all those other bands, I I could hear like the the complexity and the and the talent that goes into each instrument. And it's not just everyone is playing at once. There's different 
like you know styles everyone's different trying to elements, do. So. Yeah, different ingredients to the pot roast. Have you ever have people uh, reacted that way to you to like your music before, or people give you like shit about like oh you know, it's all just like noise and shit? I don't um, know. it is, but I mean, there's there's music called noise core. You know, even if, like yeah. you listen to bands like Converge or you listen to like th- uh, real real grind bands, um, like even like Despise Icon, they're 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 a complex band. Like, yeah, they're a real complex band, but like at this. I mean, people have kind of brought up that it's 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 easy, but you know, it's like it's easy for us, but it could be difficult. It's it's really hard to make nonsense sound good and heavy <laughs> and, and have formula and have uh, you know have flow. But um, you know, when we started writing that music, it was like let's write something badass and heavy. You know? Yeah. And this was like in two thousand and five. So mm-hmm. back then, you write music just because you want to play that VFW hall and just be the the craziest band there and then it turned into like a genre it turned into deathcore which is like yeah. death metal and, and hardcore, hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like it's actually deathcore is heavy death metal and metalcore mm-hmm. that's what I've heard yeah I was gonna ask you about that like that label you got do you guys uh, do you like that label or do you nuclear blast like no I mean sorry the label of being deathcore oh do you deathcore like that well deathcore I mean label? it's just like anything that it's, it's a label that the kids have put on it because they need to it's a category, just yeah. like alternative rock. Like Nirvana was pop rock back in the day, and technically they were. But mm. at the same time, they were a punk rock band from Seattle, sort of. What is punk rock, though? You know, like, even punk rock alone is like no rules. Like, it's not even, it's it's more of an attitude than it is a genre of music. So um, a- anything to put it in a category is good. I mean, I hear my mom's a teacher, so is my brother, but like they have students who are like, oh, we listen to deathcore yeah. and metalcore, and it's like, Whatever happened just to like, oh, I listen to metal, but I'm down for Pantera and I'm down for Whitechapel. Like, yeah, yeah. I think the reason is that it's, there's a difference between like, you know, say like uh, like what you said, Pantera and Metallica, and that's why they want to like subgenre everything like subgenre, you said. Subgenre, so it's not like, it's not. It's not confusing, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess so. But um, it's whatever. I think. Um, but I was wondering like how bands like, uh, you know, they like hate being called like, um, Post hardcore or, yeah, or yeah. anything like that, or like even you, I was like being deathcore. I thought maybe like you guys were like, you know, just call us metal. You know, we're tired of people trying to like throw us in this different areas, things like that. So I don't know. One more time, sorry. Oh yeah, I was just saying like people were like saying putting. I was just wondering if people call you like deathcore and you guys hated the that label or you just you sound like you're just saying you just deal, you just yeah, deal with it. It's yeah, it's cool. It's you know, it's just like corn's new metal. Yeah. But at the same time, they're just like a heavy metal band. So right, it's a, right, right. It's just like, yeah, it's a genre. It's a the ability just to put a put you in a category, which is it's all metal at the end of the day. It's yeah. all rock and roll, really. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying, like a uh, kind of old school Lollapalooza, or do you like more like a deathcore, like 2016, like kind of tour? Or something I like, like that? I like both. So, like what I what I usually what we, we usually like to do, we usually like to tour with bands that we don't sound like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Bands that are like could it could be a complete different type of band, you know? That we're friends with this band called Vanna, and mm. they're from Boston, and they're they're them two are there. Like they just came out with an alternative rock EP, which is a bunch of covers of like Manson and Offspring and Metallica, which is fucking game changer for a lot of hardcore bands but um you know i we like to tour with bands that are not really like us like we've done tours with the muir parkway um and then at the same time it's like we end up doing festivals together and it's like oh yeah we're playing with other bands that are in our genre but it's really hard to really i mean i don't i don't think we sound like anyone that i can think of i mean we sound similar to certain bands but 
you know, some band like bands I would consider would sound like are like you know like Carnifex, but even Carnifex, I think they're like way more technical than we are. Like their their drummer Sean is way like way more faster and cleaner than yeah. I am. I'm like the I'm like the <laughs> Dave Grohl of of metal or deathcore, <laughs> like most minimum. I'm like the Lars Ulrich, like just like, yeah. keep it basic, right? The pay attention to the part, not like you know, do it to some crazy extent. And I try to do both, you know, I don't try to, but yeah, I mean. Well, your new album, well, the one that came out last year, I see a slight difference in the sound from the previous one. Like, your guys are trying to be more, more diverse, so you're not really, like, holding back. You're trying. Yeah, like, we're... Like, the album in general, I, I I hear, like, more, like, you know, like, uh, softer guitar solos. I yeah. hear, like, other things happening, Little so... Little leads, uh, yeah. a lot of space, a lot of room to breathe. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to do. Um, is that the, what you're going to do for the following record you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, this next record is going to be definitely a record for ourselves. I mean, we're recording with Ross Robinson, and we're not going to try to write a deathcore record. We're not going to try to write a metal record. We're going to write a record that we want to write, like our own music. Like, Basically, we're going to write something. T- we're going to compose it together as a band, jam it and play it, and put our hearts and souls into it and something that we because you know i mean like everyone in the band listens to different stuff like dude we listen to like hendrix we'll listen to incubus we listen to sublime we listen to like i personally listen to a lot of electron electronic music like nine inch nails and stuff like that so i i want to think of it like we're all writing our own solo album within one album are you going to incorporate writing, all those like styles at the one you think be ourselves yeah okay. and i mean we're not going to be like oh let's write a part that's like Nine Inch Nails, it's going to be like, oh, well, I'm vibing this part. Like, how about we just do electric drums to that riff and then kind of like go off of there? Like, okay. Or something that's like more of like synthy in the back, you know? Like, we're going to really just write a record and keeping in mind that we're going to make this record and we're going to throw it away after. Okay. No one's going to hear it. No one's ever going to see it. No one's ever going to know about it. And we're going to, in our heads, we're going to be like, let's make an album together. It's basically like you're a painter. And mm-hmm. someone gives you all the money in the world and gives you all anything you want, whatever. And they say, paint me something that just you want to paint. Not like a client, not something that you this. And then just remember, when you're done, we're going to burn it. No one's ever going to see it. So you're treating that painting a different way. You're, you're keeping in mind that you don't sit there and go like, I don't know, man. People might think that's gay or like, maybe that's like not cool. Or that kind of sounds like that song. It's like, no, who cares? Write what you want to write. Uh-huh. And then drive it into the ocean. That's it. And that's pretty much what this next record's gonna be. Okay. So we might lose a lot of fans or win a lot of fans, who knows? But at the same time it's like I, I don't wanna write a record that's like you know, when you're in a band you're on you're in the system you have management, you got tours, so like if you wanna go on warp tour you have to put out a record during the summer, which means you have to record it January, February, March, so that by April, May it's in production, and by June, like every every band does that. Like if uh-huh. you, and we wanted to break break the cycle. Like we've been doing that forever. Like we've been putting out albums during the summer, and we've been doing winter tours in Europe. We've been touring America, and the, and every band does it. That's why like all these tours always it's just flip flopping all over the place. So it's like this time we're like no, we're not gonna go to you know Australia. We're just gonna stay here, and we're gonna record at our own leisure, and and you know we're gonna. Not, basically not really give a shit and do our own thing and and if we're hated for it then we're hated but if not then i'm more or less looking to make music that has long longevity you know like there's like kids that come up to us now and they're just like man you're like i like your new shit but man your guys's first record that's like my favorite album right and i'm just like yeah because when i wrote that when we wrote that record together we weren't thinking about what's cool or what's hot or what deathcore is we were like writing a record for ourselves and like really just trying to trying to get all our energy and our feelings into a recording and then that's what we did and they pushed record and then lo and behold it's the first record which back then was like okay you know it came out in 2007 what was out in 2007 like there was like i think our album sold like 9,000 first week you know like and then and that well i mean the album's gone way over 100,000 now but Mm -hmm. um that, basically what I'm saying the album wasn't the the creme de la creme at the time but now that it's it's been throughout time that the album's been you know it's, it's held through it and it's it's spoken its voice and it's created its own thing and that's what we want to do with our next record it may be weird this year next year but in five or seven years from now when music 
all these bands start chilling out and writing good mu- actual music and not caring about if it's heavy or not, this album might be like, that's like, people might be like, Suicide Silence records were all good. It's like Metallica, you know, it's like went through and they kind of went through this and shit happened. But now it's like that their best record is the self-titled record or whatever, like whatever we decide to name it. Okay. And I feel like that's that's where that's where we're at really. All right. So you you're saying that at some point you're gonna have to cut your hair and do like a, a rock oh, album. Well so- I mean I've always wanted to cut my hair and it, I had I went from long I've had long hair since nineteen ninety seven. Uh-huh. That was in seventh grade. But um you know, it's I probably will always have long hair. I mean I, and it's it's not like we're writing a record and we're gonna change our style. Like we're just writing a record. We're gonna play two, three new songs every set. We're still gonna play the old shit. We're gonna slam through we're going to have lights. We're going to have dragons coming out of the fucking speakers. We're going to have our backdrops. We're going to play all the songs from the first record, second, third. We're going to jam it all. It's just, you know, the other difference is we're making a, a new record. Yeah. And we, we're we going to write heavy shit on it, but we're also going to keep in mind, like, we're going to show our musicianship through it, you know? We're going to prove, like, write something that I can show my parents and be like, I'm proud of this, you know? I'm proud of everything I write, but something that I'm, like, more musical, you know? Yeah. Take, take the... It's like the Black Album, Metallica. You compare that with their first record. It's like it's a it's kind of night and day, you know. Like there there's yep, some definitely. singing going yeah. on. There's some there's some violins. There's some cellos. You know, they didn't really like. I'm not saying we're gonna go completely different, but we're just gonna write some pretty nice harmonious music. You know. Right. So all you fans out there, brace yourself. You know, something is coming okay. that you're not gonna expect. The uh, folk rock album from uh, <laughs> Suicide Suicide Machines. I mean, suicide too silence. many bands that have suicide in them. I'm sorry. Suicide, suicide, suicide silence is coming. Yeah. So, <sighs> might play a clip here. <laughs> some uh questions for eddie about singing in the band and how he, maybe you might know um i could probably help okay. uh, answer somewhat so he was in i i looked up he's in the band before called all all, all shall, shall perish. perish yeah so i don't know if you know when when he decided to uh help you guys out and become the singer for your band was there like a, a big issue for him leaving the other band well I mean, I'll, I'll probably just speak on my own on this i mean eddie is one of my best friends um i've we did our first tour together in 2006, Suicide Silence and All Shall Perish. Yeah. All Shall Perish has gone through a lot of members. Uh, the first time I ever saw All Shall Perish, Eddie wasn't even in the band. They had a guy named Craig. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean, w- basically what happened was um, All Shall Perish is still actually a band, but um, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of um, from my understanding, there was a lot of drama between... Eddie and a certain member of All Shall Parish, okay. who's an original member, the only original member of the band, and they just have, they have a, a really shitty relationship where their band could have con- kind of done more more things, but um, you know they had someone saying like no that's that's dumb let's not do that and Eddie's kind of like well I want to I want to tour like I want to do this I want to do that why do we have to be so re- like reclusive and like only tour with like underground death metal bands why don't we like branch off like why like why do we have to like and basically, everyone saw that he wanted to spread his wings. Um, we did ask him to help. But at the same time, it's, we didn't... Suicide Sense did not have, like, an elaborate plan. We never had a plan, like, okay, well, you know, this is what happened, so we're, let's write a record. No, it was just like, all right, well, this is what happened, so what should we do next? We took step by step, and it's like, all right, let's have a memorial show. That's cool. We'll play our songs for the fans. They can see us play. And they could be a part of something that's different. No one's really ever done that. I mean, maybe Freddie Mercury did something similar yeah, when, yeah. when he died. But um, we we did it all for the fans. And, um, you know, we would play. And then um, then came the next step. It's like, well, let's keep writing music. 
Mm-hmm. All right, for ourselves, whatever. Let's write You Can't Stop Me, the album. Started writing it and started writing it, and then we're just like, well, um, what should we just, what should we do? Like, who should we get, you know, should we find a singer? Should we do this? Like, what feels natural? And it's just like, you know what, let's, Eddie really, we're, Eddie's our good friend. He's been our best friend forever, and it's like, he, he worked out really well for, um, for the memorial show, you know, he did that song, and not even that, like, he stays with me whenever he's in town, um, me and him have always talked about starting a group together, starting ba- making music together, and um, and as far as him, you know, leaving All Shall Perish to join this band, it was more like, it was basically he, they were, we asked them to help us out, someone in the man got, band got pissed, who already doesn't even like Eddie, and, and technically fired him, like, they said, what, you're gonna do this, fucking, you're not in the band anymore then, it's like, okay. so I'm fired, but I'm just helping him out, slash, what's the story am i am i am i quitting are you kicking me out like there's no there's no there was no real and now like they're actually going through a lot of legal things about between that whole band and and rights and names and stuff like that but um eddie's basically a a, a full range range animal he 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 has a very great voice too he can sing he can scream he can shout he can talk he's a great speaker he's a Probably I'd give you a big, better interview than I could. Yeah. Like, but you're getting a different perspective. I understand. Me. So, like, when I listen to, like, so what I did was I put, like, your albums all on, like, a shuffle. Yeah. So it's not like I'm, to to see if I see a difference between his singing techniques and what Mitch is doing. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like he was, like, emulating his style or do you see, like, him ha- having his own, like, style on this he, latest record? He was doing his own style of some style that's already there. So he was doing... Eddie's version of a suicide silent song. Okay. So it's kind of like you got, you got like Hunter S. Thompson, right? And he has these movies, Fear and Loathing, and then there's Excellent movie, the by Buff- the way. Yeah, where, where the Buffalo Run. Um, there's this guy, which is the character, the Gonzo, not the yeah. Gonzo, but so like I guess that's more like it's it's basically someone's version of something that's part of a, a, a vibe. So I mean, but that's the thing. Um. Every album we've ever done, I've been a part of the pre-production, and me and Mitch have sat in my room, and me and him have... I, I recorded all the music in the in the jam space, take it to my house, would sit there, he'd come over, he'd listen to it, he'd put his ideas down, and I would. me and him would put all the, the structures to it, because it's like a drummer vocal thing, like, he would put it, he'd have his, his voice, and I'd be like, that would sound cool if you did this, but on the back burner, we'd scream this, it's a back and forth, like, call and pull, like, we would... Like, this pattern sounds cool, so I was always a part of the vocal production, always. And then, same thing with Eddie. Like, Eddie was already on it. Like, he was, like... Plus, I wanted him to do his own thing, but it's, like... With Suicide Signs, it's, like, there's only so much you can do. Like, as far as, like, changing the game. Like, but... I feel he did some different stuff, and at the same time, he's... We're making Suicide Silence songs, which is, like... Suicide Silence is is already its own sound, so... We don't want to change it. We wanted to keep it the same, not not use Mitch as a as a a main focal point of like let's sound like that but um, it was just like there's like spaces in the songs that vocals can go on and then he just threw it in there okay and at the same time him and Mitch had a very they have different ranges but they're it's a very similar range at the end of the day like it's like five different voices you got like low you got low mid you got mid you got high mid and you got high and you got super high yeah, Not basically just... what I hear is there's you either scream like you know you got burned with scolding hot water, yeah, or you sound like the devil himself. Yeah. But also, you sound like a, a crazy... like a, a pig. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> so yeah. they have the you have the three different styles going in there, which I I mean I learned all this when that guy introduced me to uh, yeah, yeah. all the styles. I'm like, oh, this I never knew that was a technique of singing before. But oh, you yeah. incorporate all three of those on all the albums and and do that, and he's doing yeah. the same thing as well. At he's least when I saw it. the live footage and stuff too. This will yeah. be my first time seeing you guys live, so I'm a little excited about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the same time, you know, Eddie's a very good performer. Like, yeah. There's a lot of vocalists out there that are good, and they're, like, studio good, but when they put them on stage, they're, like, no presence, they don't have any energy, and it's, like, it's basically, like, studio gangster stuff. Like, yeah. Like, you can do it in there, but when you're on stage, you're just, like, you're cheating yourself, and, you know, but, I mean, we just wanted somebody that, you know, that got it and it clicked and then that now it's like we had to put this record out to put it out like it was there it was step by step like all right well i guess he's we're working together and we're doing the songs and okay i guess we're putting it out now it's like we're a whole new band 
mm. but a same band. So we're gonna make an album together as if we're a whole new band. Mm. So yeah. Awesome. So, what are some of your favorite albums that don't uh, don't have to necessarily be metal albums, but from this past year that you heard? Uh, this past year, uh, t- this band called Tame Impala, really good record. They just came out called Currents. Mm. Um, are they metal as well? No, no? they're okay. like they're from Australia. They're okay. like a, they're considered shoegaze. Okay, shoegaze is like John Lennon yeah, yeah. kind of like a we were we just like reviewed the latest from Silver Sun Pickup uh, yesterday. Okay, you listen to them at all? Yeah, 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 stuff yeah. like that. They're from Silver Lake, right near where I live. Yeah. Um, yeah, that. Oh, what else have I gotten? The new Fit for an Autopsy is really good. Those are also good friends of mine. They're writing some brutal shit. Mm-hmm. Like, talk about technical. Like, that shit's like, you can't even, you know, it's it's hard. To, it's just really good. Um, the new Thy Art is Murder is really good. Um I forget. I really forget what I've been listening to lately. Um, it's usually, I mean, I listen to a lot of like, what? What? I, this crosses came out like a year ago, but crosses like Chino Chino Moreno side project. Yeah, yeah. I'm stoked for the new Deftones record. Yeah. That's gonna be sick. Um, other than that, that's like pretty much it. Like, uh, I have Spotify, so I'm always listening to music, and like, I'll hear one band, and I'll be like, oh, I want to hear what's similar, and I'll end up finding out about. Another Other band, bands yeah. that are like the same style. Well, metal wise, my favorite album this year has been the new Lamb of God album. Oh yeah, I, yeah, it's it a really good one. Yeah, it's we gonna be it. in my top ten definitely. And uh, I wanted, did you hear the new the new Slayer? Like, what is your take on that? I one? heard the new. Well, it's funny because Lamb of God and Slayer are both on our record label, a Nuclear yeah, Blast. Yeah. So we got those records before. Okay. I I love them. It sounds like okay. A, so it sounds you're like a you're not gonna record. give me a real opinion since you're sharing a label. Um. Well, <laughs> my whole thing with Slayer is. I'm an I'm an OG fan and also I'm a drummer. Yeah. And Dave Lombardo is one of my favorite drummers, and I like him because he's not perfect. I yeah. like him because he's just he goes up there and and you know he could play like complete shit or can play like gold, but it's like it doesn't matter. It's like you're getting you're getting something different from a live perspective, and I think all his live records are good. Um, I could tell. It sounds like the drummer was kind of told what to do, like slash like oh let's let's Slayer would do this, so let's do this and. Paul's a great, great drummer. He's one of mm. one of the best drummers, and he actually did a he did a God Hates Us All with them. Yeah, and um, I'm just like I, I overall great record, um, ten out of ten. Okay. Um, I, the only thing is, it's just like oh yeah, I would it would have been cool to hear, um, you know, Dave Lombardo on it, and and it's pretty. It, it gives a little bit of a different, but at the end of the day, it's like you got like Kerry King probably writing most of it, you know, yeah. especially since Jeff's gone. So it's like. It becomes, and not even that. Carrie's wrote most of it the whole time since the beginning. So, mm-hmm. so I mean, it's just like you. I like to hear songs that are di- like I want to hear a riff that Carrie King and Dave Lombardo fought over <laughs> to get a song together. Just I don't want to hear just like no arguments. I say what goes, and that's what goes. Like a movie, you got your art director, and you got your director, you got your cin- your your guy who fucking cinematographer, whatever. You got your, for, yeah, cinema yeah. Talk. So you yeah. got all these different opinions, and they fight, and then you get this end, end result, as opposed to, like, one person's idea, it's only his idea, and that's what it is, and that's going to be what it is, you know. But, I mean, so Slayer record is Slayer record. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like, your fans just want Slayer. Yeah. So they're going to get was, Slayer. That's the kind of corner I felt they painted themselves in, because they can't. Because you can't have a record, and then the, student, the people be like, "This doesn't sound like Slayer." If they did anything different, yeah. So now they have. They're kind of like the. I said that's in my review, but they're kind of like the Ramones of like a, a thrash metal. Yeah, pretty you're much. Gonna, they're true. gonna do the same, kind of thing over and over. And it's up to you to decide. If you're a fan, you're gonna buy it regardless. Or if you want, to, but if you want to hear, something that's like better in your opinion than like a Rain and Blood or better than a Season of Abyss, that's how I was rating it as. And I don't think it's better than that, but. There are some good songs in it, so I'll just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... I agree. Those albums came out, like I said, they're timeless. When they came yeah. out, it was probably like, oh, these are sick, and then, like, throughout time, yeah. with playing them live, like, they became more sacred. Like, all those songs, like, they're just like, yeah. oh, yeah, that song. It's like, you know, who knows? In five years from now, one of those Slayer songs could be pretty sacred, you know? Yeah, from the new album, yeah, maybe. New Lamb of God is sick, though. Yeah, yeah. I like because I like Pant- Pantera and I noticed their influence a lot in there in some in their in that sound. I don't I never noticed that before in all their other albums, but this one 
I, I definitely can hear a Pantera sound in the, yeah. In the, yeah, so. in the riffage and, yeah. and some of the drumming. Yeah, because the Adler Brothers are freaking... That's that's that connection, man. You got you got a band like Van Halen or Pantera, Lamb of God, um, where you have a brother, brother guitarist and drummer connection. So there's always going to be that A and B of like you know that that connection. Yeah, I could talk metal all day with you. But <laughs> we can. We I guess we got to get back to your band. A couple more questions. Uh, so I noticed you guys have a song on. On the Saw soundtrack, and I, I guess it's a remix to this song, Genocide. Genocide, yeah. And it's from, like, the sixth um, Saw movie, I think. Yeah. Did you actually like those movies, and which yes, one was we, your favorite? Yes, we did. Uh, I like all the Saw movies. Um, oh, I, okay. I remember when we got the offer, like, hey, look, we're, we're offered to put a song on the Saw 6 soundtrack. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. The song Genocide, actually, the version that is on, on the Saw 6 is the original version. Oh, okay. We realized... It, since we did this, we did that record. Uh, it's off of No Time to Bleed. We did it with Machine here in uh, Weehawk in New Jersey. Okay. Um, we were there for like two months, but um, the song was really long, and and Machine was like, "Dude, honestly, like all these little parts and all that, like let's just start chopping it down. We don't need that part. We don't need that part." Which already is like what I'm against music, like you know, and not even that. We've tried to play that song, and it's so awkward because it's all copy paste, chop chop, which is why we don't make albums like that anymore. Not. Hating on Machine, um, he did Lamb of God as well, like the first yeah. couple records. Um, so you guys prefer when you record just to record I, live as opposed to like yeah, you know. or just like we write a song, we jam it out, we work out the kinks, and then we um, we uh, play it live. We're able to play it live, and then we record it after that. I mean, we don't have to necessarily record it live, but it's you know like the way old school bands did it, like you know Led Zeppelin, like. They wrote a jam, and they're like, hell yeah, and they played it live in front of people, and they're like, yeah, and it's like, oh, we got a record deal. Cool, let's record that song we've been playing, and it sounds yeah. like they've been playing it, not, right. like, not like it was on the spot. So mm -hmm. Genocide was one of those songs that we chopped it up, and we're like, okay, well, this is the album version, which is just, it's like we cut a minute out of it. We cut all the fat out of it and just gave it solid muscle and bones, and that's the album version, and then we're like, oh, we got Saul Sick, let's put, uh, how about we put the the original version of, version of Genocide on there, which is cool for fans because they'll get it yeah. and they'll listen to it and realize it does not sound anything. It sounds different from the album version. And okay. it's, it's like a little secret out there that I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. So uh, yeah. I was going to ask you, like, because it seemed like you just took an old song and just threw it on there. So it wasn't like you had to really write a, a song for the soundtrack. Yeah, you no, know? we yeah. gave it a little special kick. Yeah, that's cool. I have a, Actually, um, I kind of stopped after Saw 4. Yeah. But if you're saying it got better after that, I guess I'll keep they're, watching they're all, it. They're, they're suspenseful movies. I yeah. mean, if, if... I felt like... I, I, I hate the... I, I, if you haven't seen this movie by now, sorry, spoiler alert, whatever, but I felt like when he was killed in the third one, like, yeah. where is this going and how is he recording all this stuff still after he's dead? It's just like Jason Voorhees, man, and like Freddy Krueger. That's know? fine. If he just rose from the dead every movie, I, but he's, he's nowhere... Like actor wise, to be seen after thirty, it's just a voice. Um, and besides flashbacks and stuff, yeah. Um, it's just that he's recording all these like tapes and stuff. It's like you did all this before you died with you fucking Tupac, like, damn. <laughs> right? Yeah, but, they're. I mean, they're suspenseful movies. They're not like the greatest movies, but I mean, they're like they're still pretty gory and they're still yeah. pretty scary. So I mean, but you're in a deathcore band, so you like all that, like you know, like you know, not so much grindhouse stuff, but more like the Eli Roth kind of horror yeah, yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm a fan of all, yeah. all types of horror stuff. And, Still uh, haven't seen uh, Human Centipede 3 yet, but I'm trying to get around one? to it. Which one? Human, Human Centipede oh, 3. Human, so oh, I won't even watch it. Oh, there, you have a limit now. Okay. Yeah, I can't even. <laughs> I mean, I saw I saw Human Centipede 1. Part 2, I was like, I think I was really, really stoned. And yeah. I, 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 like, that probably would've, I probably would have enjoyed it more if I was. Oh, man. That's like, I couldn't even Maybe I wouldn't it. if I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really bad. I mean, shit. I mean, but that's the thing. That it's poor like, baby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the worst part. Yeah, I was like, did you, I would have been like in this? Like, do we really have to do do that? Your <laughs> mind is fucked up. Uh, the guy that wrote the movie, I'm like, it's just, nah. You, you can probably cut that out, dude. That I think you made your point. I mean, they're just like, <laughs> how do we get something? Like, if you're if you're in a group of people and you want to make a movie, and you're like, what's the craziest shit we? Can yeah, do? that's probably what they and did. They're like, Boom, the yeah. baby, the fucking pedal, like, boom, like, oh, perfect. That's yeah. Who does that? No one does that. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, 
to people who are like not expecting that, you're like, what the? F-? Okay, that's enough. Like, yeah. But it's all it's all entertainment. Yeah. It's just a to weird, some people anyway. Weird yeah. Form of entertainment. All right. So you said you guys are gonna record a new album soon. So after this tour is over, what's next for the band in between, like the tour ending and the new album coming out for the rest of the, the um, time being? We're it's after this tour, we go home, and then we have nothing because we're gonna be writing. Okay. We'll be writing from uh, November, December, and then January. January we might do a tour with a band. Can't say who. Okay. But it's a band that's worth. All show parish probably. No, no, it's, it's, it's really. Worth it'll be called it. awkward tour 2016. Yeah, right. right? It'll be the awkwardness <laughs> tour. Um, it's gonna. We have actually a show. We're gonna have a. We're gonna throw a benefit show. Um, sometime in near a couple months. Anyone who's in California, or anywhere else that wants to fly to California. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna go in the studio in March or April, February, March, or, like March, April. To put out that and, summer and, record, huh? Yeah, and record it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It was it it was originally we were just planning on recording it like May or June or July, mm-hmm. but it's just like we got some tours and we got this time off, so it's like why let's not procrastinate, let's just write. And it's funny because like we planned on going against the grain, but it just happens like oh we might be able to put out this album in the summer, which is like when we're gonna be like what are we gonna do this summer? Um, Mayhem Fest is over, uh, Warp Tour. I, I love. I mean, I love Warp Tour because it's like the only. It's a, it's a concert for like anyone could go see any band. But I heard that I think Kevin Lyman. I heard that Kevin Lyman's gonna be uh, changing things up a little. He did this. He did it through the show recently called um, Taste of Chaos, and um, mm-hmm. he had like Saves a Day, Glassjaw, like Mark Hoppus. Uh, sorry, he had like a bunch of bands that were like old school, right? Emo type stuff, but. There, they like they brought like thousands. I don't even know twenty, thirty thousand people to the Glen Helen in in, in, Cal- in California, and it's like he's doing these. I think he's doing more solidified tours of just not tours, but shows where like bands that can pull their own weight. Slash, like you got a lot of young bands with a lot of ego. Like they they got ego before they even had like oh I was on Warp Tour. Yeah, you played the Bubblegum stage. Like it's cool, but like you your <clears throat> your albums are not like living long you know what i mean like what happened to, what happened to bands that were like killing it recently and then they just like they kind of disappeared yeah i could think of at least 20 and i'm not even gonna say any of them yeah. but it's like members join other bands and bands die out but there's only certain bands that hold their weight but i think next year there's gonna be a, a hopefully there will be but i think there's gonna be like a another summer tour option which okay. is hopefully we're 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 guinea pigging it yeah because that would be cool to to be on a tour with some some different types of bands. Nice, nice. So finally, the hypothetical question of the day. If you could have any superpower, what would it be, and how would you exploit it? Um. <laughs> superpower. I guess my superpower I would want would be uh, Wolverine's power. Okay. Which is fast Just grow healing. your nails long anytime. And- yeah, yeah. Uh, Element, L, what is it he made out of? Adamantium skull, skeleton, mm-hmm. and you could heal, because then it, then you can do anything really. You can fly a plane, and if, even if you don't know how to fly it, you can crash and you won't die. <laughs> um, you could you could go underwater and drown, right? But you're not gonna die. So then the question I have for you then is: Does that mean you live forever? Is that their power basically? Um, and would you get bored after a while? Like, well, yeah, um, probably you probably live forever. But I mean, I don't think I don't know if you live forever. I mean, age aging has nothing to do with bone structure. But again, if you're healing, then you can't get old. But who yeah. knows? That's just one of those like uh, swept under the rug questions. It's just <laughs> those like, paradoxes on those movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. My dad always asked that question to me, like when he's a kid because he loves Superman. He's like, you know, how did Superman cut his hair if he was invincible? <laughs> it's like how I never thought about that, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like his hair wouldn't be able to cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it never grows either. Yeah, I, mean, it would I don't just, know. It so. would be perfect. He, yeah. just, he tells his hair what to do. <laughs> All right, so thank you a lot, Alex. And yeah, if you guys sure. haven't um, heard it, you got to check out Chuck out Suicide Silence, Silence. on this tour uh, with Corn. If get your tickets from whenever they're in, in your area. Now I used to have like a Ford Taurus. Uh, to that what was it? 1998, 1988 Ford Taurus. 
that would break down a lot. And this band has more breakdowns than that. <laughs> so you got to check them out. We break down the breakdowns. Yes, yes. But this has been Jarrell, and I, a pleasure seeing you. Yeah, you a good thank time. you, Jarrell. And uh, all you guys out there, I want to say, keep the music scene alive and go to a show. Bye-bye. <laughs>